from freshcapmushrooms.com and today we're going to be making straw logs for growing mushrooms. So growing mushrooms using straw is relatively simple. Basically you just take a bunch of straw, you chop it up really fine, you pasteurize it and then you inoculate it with grain spawn and, and put it into log form and let it colonize and eventually fruit. Today we're going to be doing everything up to and including the inoculation stage and in about you know two weeks from now we should have fresh oyster mushrooms. So let's go outside and see what we got set up. So here I got my straw. We're going to be chopping that straw up into little bits using a weed whacker in this big barrel. Then we're going to be pasteurizing it over here in another 55 gallon drum with a propane burner. And once that's ready to go, we're going to lay it all out on this table, let it cool down, and inoculate it with our grain spawn. So this is a 40 pound uh, square bale of wheat straw. Uh, what you want to do is kind of make it a nice and even substrate. So the best way to do that is just to chop it up into a bunch of one inch to three inch pieces. You can do it in a tote and just chop it up with like shears or scissors, but it's a lot easier to just use a weed whacker and uh, put it in something like that and, and whack it up. <laughs> So here you can see this is straw before chopping it up and this is it afterwards. You can see how it's you know a lot more broken up and you can imagine it's a lot easier for the mushroom mycelium to make its way uh, through the, the substrate and start colonizing. So this is my burner setup. I got a food grade 55 gallon drum full of water and I got this big propane burner that's sitting on top of cinder blocks. So I made this little basket out of chicken wire to hold all the straw while it's in the pasteurization bath. But uh, you can do something similar like this or you can just use a, a burlap sack or whatever will work that'll let the water go through and that'll hold all your straw together. So you don't want to pack your straw into your basket too tightly because then it'll be a lot harder for the water to penetrate the straw and for the temperature to reach the inside of the log. You can pack it in there but leave it a little bit loose. So you want your straw to be completely underwater at this point. So I like to set something heavy on top, like that cinder block bit there, and that just holds the straw under the water. So now you can hear the burner going in the background. It's fired up really hot right now to try and heat up all that water to between 65 and 80 odd degrees Celsius. That's kind of the window that you want to have for pasteurization. You don't want to go too much higher than 80 degrees Celsius because that'll actually have some negative effects. So it takes quite a while for the temperature to reach that, probably about half an hour, 45 minutes, sometimes even up to an hour depending on the strength of your burner. But once it gets there, you can turn your burner right down and you can kind of play with the temperature to try and keep it in that window for uh, at least 90 minutes. So while we're waiting for our straw to pasteurize, might as well show you what else we got going on here. I just got a, a normal scale and that's just to weigh out the, the weight of the straw to figure out how much spawn I should be adding. I have this big red tote that I want to use to mix up all the straw and the spawn together. And then I have some poly tubing and this is what I'll be uh, stuffing the straw into in order to make the straw logs. So this particular poly tubing I think is a uh, 14 inch lay flat diameter. Um, you can definitely go smaller than this. This is probably as big as you'd ever want to go, but uh, it seems to work quite well. So it's been over 90 minutes now. I've gone ahead and turned the burner off. Um, and it's still quite hot. So what I got to do is I got to pull the straw out of the burner and drain it and then spread it out on this table over here to cool before I add my spawn. So we got the straw draining now. It's going to take probably at least 15-20 minutes for it to drain. I'm going to go ahead and clean this table up. I'm going to wipe it down with rubbing alcohol and get ready to pack my bags. So we're going to be inoculating this straw with uh, oyster mushroom grain spawn. Um, this is a two and a half pound bag of spawn and you know at a 10% spawn rate you should be able to make about a 25 pound straw logs. So I wouldn't want to go too much lower than a spawn rate of 10%. You definitely can, but uh, the higher your spawn rate, the better your chances are of uh, fully being able to colonize a straw log and grow mushrooms without contamination. So I like to use at least a spawn rate of 10%. So we're going to go ahead and tie a knot 
on one end of the tubing. And I can go ahead and put it into this bucket. And I just like to have the bucket just because it's easy to keep the form on the bag while you're stuffing it. The reason we want to lay the straw out on this table is so that it can cool really quickly. Uh, if we leave it too long and allow it to cool overnight or something like that, then you're going to risk uh, contamination. You really want to minimize the exposure uh, that the pasteurized straw has to potential sources of contamination. Okay, so we've weighed out our 20 pounds of straw here. Now we just gotta go ahead and add our spawn and mix it together really well. Now depending on the mushrooms you're growing, your spawn might be kind of really hard blocks. So just kind of break it up um, and try and get all the individual grains kind of broken out. At this point too, you can go ahead and give your spawn the sniff test and just, it should just smell like nice uh, mushrooms and there shouldn't be a sour smell or anything like that. If, if your mushroom's spawn stinks, then it's been contaminated. Usually you can tell just by looking at it, but it's always good to kind of give it a sniff test before you, before you mix it through your straw. Now that you've got everything mixed together really well, you can go ahead and pack your log. Now you want to make sure as you're doing this that you pack your log as tight as possible. Like the tighter the straw is together, the easier it will be for the mycelium to work its way through the substrate. You don't want to leave big air gaps or anything like that. So just grab handfuls of it, put it in your bag, and really push it down as hard as you can, right into all the corners of the bag, and make a nice evenly packed straw log. So once you have it in there, packed tight as possible. You want to squeeze all the remaining air out. Tie the top off really tight. I like to use a zip tie to tie the top. So you can see how nice and tightly packed this log is. Uh, there's one more step you need to do though. You need to allow the mycelium to breathe as it's trying to colonize the straw. So what you gotta do is cut some X's or some holes um, all over the bag. And these are actually the same holes that the mushrooms will eventually fruit from. Now you can use a knife for this or uh, whatever you want. I like to use an arrowhead just because you stab it in there and it's kind of the perfect little X for the mushrooms to breathe and then for the mushrooms to eventually fruit. So just kind of put these holes about, you know, two inches apart all over the bag. Also, it's important to put at least a couple at the very bottom so that any excess moisture that's remaining in this log can drain out. So there you have it. I definitely got some cleaning up to do, but uh, this log is pretty much ready to go. Uh, now I just got to move it into kind of a, a cool location, you know, somewhere out of the sun so that it can fully colonize. And, you know, two weeks from now, it'll be ready to fruit. So I think that's it for this video. I'm going to let that straw log colonize inside and then next time I'm going to show you how to actually what it looks like as a mycelium is working its way through the substrate and uh, what it's like when it's ready to fruit and then we're going to actually grow some, some grow some mushrooms. So stay tuned that'll all be in the next video. Take care.